that was good. How was the worship? Did you enjoy that? Is that all right? Good. I'm glad you liked that. <clears throat> Welcome today. Glad to have you. Let me make an announcement before we start. Is that okay? Next month, November, um, the 14th, we're having our growth track one. So if you haven't been to growth track, it's, it's for uh, people that are new to LifePoint, like in the last two years, if you haven't gone yet or whenever. If you haven't gone, you want to jump in the growth track. It's the way you're going to get to know us better, get to know who we are, what we're trying to accomplish as a church, really get to know what LifePoint's all about. So if you've never been, we do it right after the service and we feed you. If for no other reason, you're getting a free meal, all right? So, so stay around. It'll be a lot of fun. If you haven't done it yet, I encourage you to do it. It'll be your first step in really being known by us a little bit, and we act to actually get to know who you are in the process. So there's growth track one on that day. Then there's growth track two the next Sunday, which is for if you're interested in connecting deeper. And there's growth track three if you're ready to engage and really begin to serve somewhere, you want to come for that one. So we have those. Those are set up for you to grow. We develop those for you to have a growth process in your life. And so take advantage of those. Those are for you. Uh, I would get paid the same either way, but we, we're, that, that's for you, you know, to help you move down the road a little bit, be more of what God wants you to be, and more connected to our church and really understand what we're all about. Because when we're all connected on the same page, focused together, we more efficiently and effectively do the work of God, okay? So we want you to know where the train is going and so you can help kind of pull in that direction, okay? So that, that, it's all fine. It's good for you. We want you to be a part of that, okay? Now, this week we're talking about our, we're in our series launch, and I'm talking about next level participation, okay? And I want to focus on that. Now, I had a wedding last night, okay? And, and Trent, we sawed off his end of the table last night, okay? And it's like, you know, so that's gone. And uh, so I'm going to sit down. <laughs> I've been, I was on my legs for five hours, so I'm just going to try to sit down here. Are you comfortable with that? Is that okay? Is it more dynamic if I'm like walking around and bringing it home, you know? Uh, I'll try to do that from here. Uh, and, uh, but anyway, uh, there's a scripture that's found in Luke chapter 5, and really we kind of started our series out with this verse, and I'm kind of coming back to it. Uh, and it said this, it said... Um, when Jesus had stopped speaking, uh, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered him and said, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your will, I will let down the net. Okay? Now, this is a great story. Uh, the disciples and uh, Jesus uh, had been speaking uh, they had been listening to him. Uh, they pushed this boat on out a little further in the water. And he starts talking to them about fishing. And they're, they're telling him, Jesus, fishing has not really been good today. Okay? And so they're, they throw their nets down and they're fishing on the side of the boat. And finally Jesus says, I want you to take your net up and I want you to put it on the other side of the boat. And so they do as Jesus commanded them. And they took their nets and they threw it on the other side of the boat. And they caught this big ton of load of fish okay and that's the way the story plays itself out now when it comes to launching your life to the next level for Jesus let me tell you something next level uh, participation is the word I'm using when I get engaged when I get involved in what God is doing and I begin to participate in the activity of God's kingdom in my life I make the sacrifices to make that happen. Uh, when I do that, it brings new life to my spiritually dried bones. Did you hear that? It brings new life. It brings new energy. It lifts up my bones that are just dried out, you know. You ever, you ever feel like your bones are dried out, you know. Every time a front comes in, I feel like my bones and my knee dried out on me, you know what I mean. You know, they just kind of get dried out. Uh, uh, sometimes, uh, but if you've ever spilt, if you've ever felt spiritually dried up and spiritually dried out, 
Um, this can help change you. Participation can bring life to that. Okay. Uh, God, I'm spiritually on high center, man. I just I can't get moving. For some reason, I'm just stuck. I can't move forward. Okay. Participation will begin to move you forward. When you go to work for God, it'll move you forward. And sometimes you just got to kind of take a step. Okay. And maybe you're thinking, God, I don't want to fail. I don't want to continue to fail. I don't want to mess up for you. I don't want to continue to mess up for you. I just need a next good step. Participation is the step that you need to move forward. Okay? And you just got to say, God, somewhere you have for me to get involved with what you're doing, and I'm just going to look to join you this week somewhere. Where are you at, God? Show me that. Reveal it to me. and let me step out. Now, this is where the disciples were. Okay? These guys are like, God... We've been fishing, but it really hadn't been fishing. We've been fishing, but we haven't been catching, you know. And I'm tired of fishing, and I'm ready to start catching. And they're a little burned out. And Jesus says, oh, i tell you what I want you to do. I want you to throw that net on the other side of the boat. Can you see the disciples when Jesus, they're like, look, we've been fishing a long time. I'm going to tell you something. When I ain't catching on the right side of the boat, I don't usually catch on the left side of the boat, okay. It isn't that big a difference, Jesus. It's like 10 feet, okay. You think all the fish are just standing over there? You know, is that, is that what's going on? What's the difference in fishing on the right side and the left side? The, reason, the difference is Jesus told them to fish on the left side, and that changes everything, you see. Obedience. Oh, well, this is where Jesus, oh, you want me to get involved here. Oh, that's different. Why? Because that's where Jesus is at. And he wants you to join him on the side of the boat that he's on so he can begin to make a difference in your life. And so it begins to change things. When I just begin to obey, when I begin to move, you see, uh, a, a ship that's moving is far easier to direct than a ship that's setting still. It just spins in circles when you direct it, okay? But if there's movement, that ship can be directed and can begin to go somewhere and move a certain direction. And God just wants us to get moving, okay? And so if I'm thinking about, well, Pastor, I don't know what it takes for me to go to the next level. I've been kind of stuck spiritually. Well, probably you're not really participating anywhere. You probably haven't decided, you know, I want to volunteer in this area. I might help in this area. I might do this for God's kingdom. I might show up and pack a box for Operation Christmas Child. I might actually just go to this growth track thing they keep talking about and maybe actually there's something to it. Next level participation means I have to make a next level step. Okay, or maybe you've snuck in the auditorium for like five months and nobody even knows you're really here and you know how to get out the door that I'm not standing at and so I don't see you, you know. And and maybe next level participation for you is just to fill out a card and say, oh, by the way, I'm here. And so that we can actually have some relationship and connection to you and you might accidentally build some friendships in the church, okay? Does that make sense? That's what I'm talking about when I start thinking about next level participation. Now, there's some things that we learn. We start talking about next level participation that the Bible teaches, okay? Uh, one of the first things the Bible teaches is that it calls, God calls his people or he calls us away from unfulfilling, unfruitful living. God does not want you to have an unfulfilled life, okay? Now, when I say that, I'm, taking, I'm talking spiritually. I know we live in a society that says, man, if it gives you happiness, you know, then you need to go for it. No, no, no. I'm talking about living the way God wants you to live your life, okay? And when we begin to do that, he begins to fulfill us. We begin to experience some really spiritual fulfillment. So God's always calling us away from unfulfilling, unfruitful living. He doesn't want us living that way. He wants us to be fruitful in the kingdom. He wants us to be fulfilled uh, in the kingdom of God. He came that we might have fulfillment. Uh, John 15, 5 says this, I'm the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Much fruit. A lot of fruit. Okay? Apart from me, you can actually do what? Nothing. Okay? You want to do something? You want to make a difference, you want to make an impact, you're going to have to do it in me. You want to find purpose, you want to be fulfilled, you want to be fruitful, it's going to come through Jesus. There is no other way, okay? That's just kind of where it comes from, okay? And God does not want you to be unfulfilled. He does not want you to be fruitful, okay? Therefore, he gives us the direction that we need to take so that we might bring much fruit, okay? 
Remember, they casted the net out, and they finally cast it where Jesus told them to catch, and what did they do? They caught fish, okay? A couple fish, two fish, a small fish. No, they caught a, fish, a net full of fish so heavy they had trouble bringing it into the boat. There was so much, there was much fruit they experienced, okay? And so, uh, you know, they, they, they caught a boat full of fish. Okay. Are you tired of holding up a little bitty stringer with like three little baby fish on it when you come back fishing? You ever get tired of that? It's like, boy, look what I caught, you know. And you like get the camera like far away, you know, or closer up to make them look bigger. You know, you take the picture like real close and they're only this big. But, you know, in your story they're that big, right? If you're tired of just catching little dinky stringers of fish in your life, you need to get on the side of the boat with Jesus because he's going to give you a boatload of big fish. Okay? It's fruitful. And the, and the scripture promises us that. If we will give it to God, walk with the Lord, our stringer will getteth bettereth. Okay? I'm sure the King James says it that way somewhere. I don't know. Okay? But, but something like that. That God wants us to have that boatload of fish in our lives. Okay? Now, if you say, Pastor, I think I may be in a boat that's not necessarily fishing the way Jesus would want me to fish. Then you gotta, you've gotten in the wrong boat and you need to get out of it. Some of us just in the wrong boat. I mean, we're not even really fishing for Jesus. We're not even in the right boat to fish for Jesus. We are so far off that we're going to have to make a serious adjustment and our fisher friends suck and we're going to have to get better fisher friends, right? We just are. I'm sorry to be so straight, but sometimes you've got to realign your fishing process. And you've got to realign who you're fishing with. And you've got to get in a different boat. And once you get in the right boat, then God is going to begin to use you to catch more fish. Does that make sense? So uh, I want you to feel that and get that. You need to get in a boat that's participating at God's level. Okay, Jesus is always doing the work of the Father. The only way we can be connected to the vine is by doing the work of the Father because that's how we are fed. That's how we grow, by being connected to the vine. That's the only way that we produce the grapes that we need to produce or the fruit that we need to produce, okay? And it's, it's in that work and that participation that you really begin to enjoy the presence of Christ. Why? Because he lives in that vine. And when I'm beginning to produce the fruit that he wants me to produce. I'm, I'm tied to him. I'm connected to him. It's, it's running through my veins. It's who I am, okay? Um, now, I, I've done all kinds of jobs in my life. I've, uh, there's, there's probably, I've worked everywhere, it just seems like, okay? Uh, putting myself through school. When I was in the seminary in Fort Worth, Texas, I worked a lot of different jobs. Um, I worked, I worked uh, you know, some crazy jobs. But and like, like one time I worked for an attorney named James Mallory. Okay, I worked for him. This guy just did traffic tickets. That's all he did. Okay, 100 a day, okay, that, that we, we would do. And, and I would send out letters to people from him. That was my job was to follow up letters. So I sent out one time, uh, I sent a letter out. And actually, I made copies of the letters. And I stuffed them in envelopes and I sent them out. Well, one time, one of the pieces of paper didn't copy. It was just a blank sheet of paper. And so I sent a blank sheet of paper out to someone, and they called in. They said, oh, hey, you guys sent me a letter, but it didn't say anything. So I sent out a letter that didn't say anything, okay? Some of you may feel like you're getting a letter that doesn't say anything. I don't, I don't know what you feel uh, in your relationship to God. But I worked all these different kind of jobs. I worked for a law firm called this and this. I worked for a law firm. Their, their name was Gandhi, Mishner, and Swindle, okay? <laughs> Honest, true. If your name is... Mac Ed Swindle, you may not want to be a lawyer. You should, do, you should just go straight to politics. Don't even stop at lawyer level, right? I mean, you know, Gandhi, Mishner, and Swindle. Oh, I'm sure they have my best interests in, you know, you know, in mind. I'm going there right off the bat, you know. Never. That'd be like being a pastor named Swindle. You know, there'd be something scary about that, wouldn't you think? Or like a pastor named, you know, uh, Devil or something. I don't know what it would be named, you know. That would make you just a, a, a little bit scary in that. But listen, all of, all of those jobs were there to sustain me so that I would have the freedom to do what God had called me to do. Okay? Now, God's called me into this as a pastor. 
And a lot of you guys are serving God as volunteers. But let me tell you something. In the reality of it all, the job that sustains you, that's just a job to keep you fed here on earth. The Lord wants you involved in a spiritual process, a spiritual participation, and an activity that's called for him and his work. And he calls all of his people to be a part of that in some way. And the more engaged we are in that, the more successful we will be at doing the activity and the work that God. That's just the way God wants to use the church. Isn't that cool? And so as we commit to that, God begins to really use us in that, okay? Now, so God always calls us to uh, unfulfilling. He calls us out of or away from our unfulfilling, unfruitful lives. God calls us to a step of willing obedience. I think you've already picked this up, okay? I love Isaiah chapter 6 where he's getting this call from God. Okay, and he says, then I heard a voice from the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here am I, send me. What is that? Why is Isaiah giving us this information? It's a calling from God. It's a, it's a uh, response to a call from God to be willingly obedient to him. God, I'm here. I will go where you send me. Now, how do I get involved in God's divine activity in my life? Well, just like anyone else does, you answer God's call. God calls you and you respond. Here am I, God. I'm here. Send me, I'll go. Anything you're going to do for God's kingdom takes this attitude of willing obedience. You've got to get here. I'll go. What do you want me to do? Where do you want me to go? What is the number one qualification for God to use you? You know what it is? Availability. God uses those who are available, and he doesn't use those who are not. It's availability. Oh, but pastor, I'm busy. That's not available. Oh, but pastor, you know, I work all the time. That's not available. Availability is very, very, very important. Here am I, Lord, send me. Now listen to me, guys. If you really want the Lord, I'm talking to the men today, to change your life, one day you need to do this, just one time, I'm asking you. Crawl down out of your hunting blind and go shopping with your wife one time. Make the sacrifice. Just do it once. Just see if it works, okay? See if she doesn't respond really well to you and your relationship doesn't grow. I promise you it will, okay? Just, t- just try it one time, okay? And the, but don't worry about it. You don't, know how, you don't have to know how to shop. She will teach you. She'll teach you. My wife teaches me, okay, uh, to, to shop, okay? And, and, but here, the first thing to being a good shopper with your wife is availability. Here am I, honey. Send me, okay? I changed it just a little bit, all right? But I'm relating it to the same thing, okay? It'll grow your relationship. It, it'll... Connect you with her. And, and don't worry because she'll tell you what the, the basic concept is and then you can just go after the basic concept, okay? And so what, what she's going to tell you, she'll say, okay, this is my size, okay? She could be cheating, but this is her size, okay? Uh, this is my style and this is my taste, Okay, get the scent, smell this, okay, my, my, you know, this is my style, this is my size, smell this, okay, go hunt it, all right, and you go sniff it out, you just take off, man, you, you go to work, you know, and you try to find it, oh, I found something in your size, because with women, size is everything, I'm telling you, I, I always tell my wife, oh, I love this jacket, this is a great jacket, she goes, you don't even know what size it is, and I'm like, okay, let me see. It's the wrong size. Yeah, there you go. Don't look where the wrong size is. Okay? You got to get on the right size rack. If you're on the wrong size rack, you're in trouble. And if you are, be sure it's too small. Don't ever overshop on the large size, guy. You need to know this stuff. I'm telling you, you're going to get hunted. You're going to get shot if you don't pay attention. All right? You know? And, 
And it, it, it just deepens that relationship. There's something about just say, hey, I'm available. Listen, if you'll be available, she'll do all the rest. She'll guide you through the process. She'll put you on the trail. She'll put you on the scent. Don't worry about it. You don't even have to know that much about it. You don't even have to be able to smell. It really doesn't matter that much. Just act like you're smelling. You know what I mean? Okay? She just, <laughs> that's funny. Isn't it? Just put her on, on you know, just, just be available. Just be ready. Just be ready to go because God calls us to a step of willing obedience. And so we just have to make ourselves available. Sometimes I think the greatest loss of resources in the church and when I say that, I mean people resources. It's just people not being available to God. And I'm looking and going, man, I think God could use that person so powerfully. But what a lot of people think is that they, they have a sense of inadequacy that I really don't think God could use me. Why? Well, I've sinned. Oh, have you? God's used a lot of great people in the Bible. Guess what? Not one of them have not sinned. They're a bunch of losers. Have you seen who God uses in the Bible? I mean, sometimes I'm like, God, really? This is what you choose to work with? Why? Well, they're frail creatures of dust just like I am. But God, they're available. They're available to the Lord. Hey, God, I'm available. I'm ready for you, okay? So don't, don't, ever, think like you're, don't ever think you're unqualified, underqualified because you, you just make yourself available to God. He'll decide how qualified you are, okay? He'll work in how he sees to work. So next level participation. We're just trying to get involved in the next level. So God calls us to a step of willing obedience, all right? Uh, number three, this is really important when you step out to participate for the Lord. God calls us to overcome unholy obstacles and schemes. Oh, now wait a second, Pastor. You acted like this was going to be fun, okay? There will probably be some struggle, in, but don't worry. You're going to struggle in life anyway. Listen, Good people, bad people, righteous people, unrighteous people struggle with life. Life is hard. That's just, it just is, okay? We, we struggle. We, our, our bosses are hard-headed and, you know, our jobs are hard to work and we get sick. And there, there's just, we, we all have some of that, okay? And so, but, but don't worry that. Don't worry about that. You know, you can overcome that. So God is calling, he calls us to overcome some unholy obstacles and schemes if we're going to be what God wants us to be, okay? Ephesians 6, I have 10 through 1. I don't know sure what that means, okay? I must have written that down wrong. Did Charles, you cover me up on that? Yeah, there we go, 10 to 12. Okay, that's better. All right. I preach it. I don't write it. I don't ever write it very good, okay? Um, that's okay. It says this, finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Be strong in the Lord and his mighty power and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's what? Schemes, okay? Oh, so we're supposed to over, overcome some unholy what? Schemes. Okay, and obstacles. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but it's against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world. Hopefully you figured that out by now. And against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Okay, so these are schemes and obstacles that God's calling us to participate in and fight against unholy enemies or the unholy enemy with unholy schemes. See, the enemy's unholy, and his schemes are unholy. Man, they're not of God, okay? And, and anyway, every Sunday, okay, quarterbacks in the NFL line up against unholy defenses with unholy schemes, okay? And they trick them. Defenses are tricky today. I mean, they look like they're in cover zero and they shift into cover one or cover two. You know what I mean? They're making these shifts around and then they'll shift back and the quarterbacks that are really good, they learn to read, oh, they're in this, but you can't just know that. You got to know, oh, they might change to this because they have a tendency to do that. They're fighting against these unholy defenses and schemes all the time, okay? I only know this because I watch Peyton Manning on Monday night, you know, and I watch him talk that stuff, you know, and then, uh, you know, coaches sometimes tell me, 
you know how much I don't know about football and stuff. And so, so you learn stuff through that. But they're they're always facing these unholy schemes that are trying to trick them, and, and they line up and they switch on him. And here's the deal: you have to know the schemes if you're going to defeat the scheme. You got to recognize it and see it and know what it is, so that you can audible away from it and move in the way that you need to move, so that you can get through it. Okay. So how do you fight? unholiness you fight it with holiness see that's how you defeat unholy schemes with holy offense okay and so that's important oh i hear what you're saying pastor i need to get my stuff together so god can use me better against the enemy no 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 that's not what i said okay you're giving yourself way too much credit Okay, you're never going to get your stuff good enough to overcome this enemy. Okay, what I'm saying is you need to get your life right with Christ, get the forgiveness of Jesus in your life, ask him to take your sin away, commit yourselves to living for him, and let Jesus pour out the righteousness of his life over the top of you so that you really can be holy because of his forgiveness of sin. Then God is going to use you in a powerful way. It's not about what you can do. It's about what Jesus does to you. And he prepares you. He, he helps you understand these defenses that you're going up against that are changing. I mean, the enemy changes his schemes. They're tricky. you got to pay attention. Only Christ can give us the holiness that we need to overcome this unholy enemy. You have to armor up. Okay? You can't show up unprepared. You got to be ready to go to war. You got to be ready to fight. You got to have the armor in because when you start participating in God's kingdom activity for the first time, the enemy's feeling threatened by you. Okay? I mean, when you're just living any way you want to live that has nothing to do with what God wants you to do, Satan doesn't care about you. He does. You're like doing his work for him. He doesn't care. He's like, man, you give me the day off. I don't even have to tempt you. You know, you can't even get close to what God wants you to be, right? You know, but once you kind of start getting on the track, you can expect there's going to be some attack because now you're on the radar. I mean, Satan's like, man, this this person's getting his stuff together. He's going to hurt my defense if I don't really get my act together with him, right? And so he's going to throw something at you. But God promises that he will help you overcome that, okay? We're Texans. We know that no good battle is fought until you draw a line. you got to draw a line somewhere, right? I mean, we're, we know the Alamo. We know our history. We know you draw the line. You say, hey, you're going to be on this side, you're going to be on that side. But you got to decide. you got to quit standing over the line, all right? Where are you going to be? You're going to get in. You're going to get out. You're going to participate. Hey, I'm in the game. I'm going to play for keeps. Then you better hang on because the game is going to start at that time, right? We just have to know that God calls us to overcome some holy obstacles and some holy schemes, but all of it is part of becoming what God wants us to become. And a part of it is becoming the fruitful, fulfilled person that God wants you to be. I have to participate in God's kingdom activity. God, how do you want me to get involved? Anytime you get involved in God's activity, it begins to change your life. Now, here's the last thing. Whenever it comes to participating in God's kingdom, God always calls us away from our excuses and our self-doubt. He calls us out of excuses and self-doubt. God, I don't know if I can do this. God, I, uh, there's a lot of excuses I have, Lord. There's reasons that I can't do it. Scripture says in Jeremiah 17, 7, but blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord whose confidence is in him. You see, if you want to move forward and participate in God's activity, it's going to take some faith. It's going to take some confidence in him. Blessed is the one that says, I trust God and I believe in him. He will lead me through it. Psalms 27.3 says this, Though an army besiege me, I mean, if I'm totally surrounded and overcome by an army, though they besiege me, my heart will not fear. The war breaks out against me. Even then, I'm going to be confident. Isn't that cool? Oh, it's easy to be confident when it's all going for you. 
But what about when war breaks out against you? When you're like, man, Lord, I was just on top getting things going, and this is not going as well as I thought. You really messed me up. Hey, that's when it all really begins. That's when the rubber hits the road. That's when it begins to start with your life with Christ. Okay? See, listen to this. I thought of this this week. Satan is like a horse. He can smell fear, man. Listen, you get on a ride and Satan's in there, he can smell it when you're, fe- when you're fearful. He'll take you for a crazy ride. He knows when you're scared and he knows when you're confident. And the scripture says you need to be confident. How? By trusting in the Lord. You don't want to get caught. You want to be trusting in the Lord. Okay? Oh, okay, Pastor. So I need to get rid of my self doubt and start trusting in myself better. No, again. No. Where's your trust going to go? In God, in the Lord. I'm not telling you to trust more in yourself. Please don't. Okay? Listen, I don't trust anybody. I don't, I don't trust myself sometimes. Okay? You can't trust yourself. Don't trust what you think. Don't trust what you feel. Trust what God says. Trust what God thinks. Trust what God tells you. Uh, uh, Never question in the darkness what God has told you in the light. Trust in the Lord. Receive what God gives you. Follow God. Uh, Leave your excuses behind. Take your self-doubt. Put it at the foot of the cross. Place it there. Walk away from it. Leave it with Jesus. Leave it with your forgiveness of your sin. Just let it go. You see, participating in God's kingdom's work means trusting more fully in God and in His Word. Participating in God's work is the level, the next level where you begin to gain some spiritual confidence. You begin to step out. You begin doing something for God. You begin to get your spiritual legs under you for the first time. You begin to get out of the boat and begin to get your legs underneath you participation is stepping out for God it's like walking across the hot coals you know it's like making the trust fall knowing that God will catch you okay it's just depending on the Lord it's just gut level trusting in God with all of the hi- without all of the hype that this world offers us because it's false it's not even really true what this world tries to feed us. This world will not bring you fulfillment. This world will not give you what you need to be fruitful. That only comes from the creator that created it all. It only comes from his son that went to the cross and died for our sins. And when we receive that into our life, and we begin to participate in that and make that a part of who we are, we begin to go to next level. So what is your step? What is it for you to go the next level? Is it beginning that relationship with Christ, maybe? Is it maybe signing up for that growth track one? Is it getting connected into a group? Is it adjusting something in your lifestyle that's keeping you from being available to Christ? What is it for you? Whatever it is, give it to the Lord. Let go of it. Put it behind you. Step to the next level. Begin to participate for God and kingdom activity. And what is that activity for you? Let God, just pray and say, Lord, show me what it is. And if you show me, here am I, send me, I will go. And God begins to work right at that point. Let's bow our heads together for prayer today. I don't know which level God's calling you or what step he's calling you to take. I just encourage you right now to take a few minutes to ask God to help you make that step. Ask him to show you. And then step out. It's not complicated. Step out. Move out for God. Allow him to bring energy (coughs) and freshness to those dried up bones spiritually that you have in your body. Allow him to begin to use you in new ways. Maybe at home maybe in the workplace, maybe in your church, maybe in your community, but some way to begin to be an influence for God and His Word. Make it your prayer right now. I'll give you just a few seconds to do that.
All right, let's pray together. Father, thank you for today. What a great day. Thank you for this series and launch, and thank you for working through us. Thank you for just giving us strength and freshness and just resurrecting these dry bones in our lives, God. Thank you for all you do for us. Teach us to be more like you want us to be. We give ourselves to you, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys.